Are you are you competing with me to see who can sit straighter on yeah, the couch? You'll win. I will win because I do yoga. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm John. And I'm Ann. And this is John, John and Ann's, Ann's Wrestling, Wrestling Podcast. Podcast. I didn't set up the music. I didn't bam, set up bam, the music. Bam, 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 bam. Man, uh, producing and recording your own podcast is and hosting is a lot of work. And it is a every lot. once in a while, there's just like there's like a million little things you have to set up, and then like you'll start recording and you'll be like, oh, I forgot this one step out of the forty five steps I need to take. I should really just write them down. Yeah, that'd be great. There's no reason for me not to. And then maybe because Kathy then if can and help then us. if something happens to me, you could carry on. I could carry on. The the show can carry on without yeah, you. Yeah, which would be the worst part of something if, happening to me. Yeah, if something happened to you, you wouldn't be Kathy able to get your I, wrestling out. I know I wouldn't be. I, who? How would I talk to the millions mm-hmm. of people? How would Kathy and I? I would definitely replace you. As, Kathy would be the co-host. The fact that I'm replaceable. Well, but by by our by our child here, by our daughter. Okay, but but. It was a cat. A cat that cannot speak. Well, not yet, but we'll and work on that. And doesn't watch wrestling, frankly. Well, she'll, we'll work on that. She does not watch. She takes no interest in it at all. She really all. doesn't. Didn't she watch something one time? Didn't she watch like Logan Paul? Didn't she seem like really interested in Logan she Paul She really one time? liked Logan Paul. She was a huge Logan Paul fan, which she's, just goes to show she's not a wrestling fan. That's true. She's Gen Alpha. You know, she's very, uh, she's really, you know, he's really, he connects with kids, you know, like he knows how to connect with the younger generation. Yeah. Like she likes the things that have the bright colors and the, the fun sounds, but really she just wants to sit and watch, um, Doghouse UK. Oh, she loves Doghouse UK. Or, um, Deal or No Deal Island. Those are her two favorite shows. She does shows. love Deal or No Deal Island. Well, you know, Doghouse UK has dogs. So animals like her mm-hmm. and like green. It reminds she, her being in the shelter. It does. And she's like, oh, I hope. That yeah. they find a home like I did. It's, and then, yeah, it's nostalgic for her. And then Deal or No Deal Island is like, is an island. And who doesn't? Yeah. And there's deals. Or maybe not. Well, she's, you know, she's interested in deals. She's a cat. Yeah, she likes deals. She Cats likes like figure. deals. She's a cat from New York City. She loves a deal. Cats are always like thinking in terms of the deal. You know, they're like, hmm, how likely am I to get a treat from doing this? Yeah. And very often they bet on themselves. Yeah, they do. And say, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it because I don't buy it. Yeah, exactly. They're they're like the sharks from Shark Tank. They're like, and for that reason, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's like a cat's catchphrase. And for that reason, I'm out. You're not going to give me a treat. And for that reason, <laughs> Mr. Wonderful. I'm tired of being petted, and for that reason, I'm out. Is there a shark named Kathy? Lori, right? That's her yeah, name. Yeah, there's a Lori. I can't remember their names. Mark Cuban. I know Mark Cuban. Mr. Wonderful. I unfortunately know Mr. Wonderful. I know. Kevin is his name. I don't remember what his real name was. Last name is. Also funny, he's Canadian. Oh. A Canadian capitalist. Yeah, they exist. They exist. I mean, I'm not they have sh- capitalism in Canada. They do. They have a lot of it. They have, um, just because they have... Uh, you know, free healthcare doesn't government healthcare doesn't yeah, mean the, they don't the beaver trade, the be, the fur trade. Ah, remember the fur trade? I don't. Were you a history minor? <laughs> yeah, minor. <laughs> they only covered the biggest it things. Like, it was like the the thing that like made Canada was the fur trade. Well, they only covered it. You know, I mean, was we were it wasn't Canadian up there history. And, it was you know. <laughs> Was Global it, history. You I mean aren't you from New York and didn't you major in or minor in history at a university that was probably forty five minutes from the Canadian border? It didn't come up. It didn't come up. It didn't come up. It didn't come up. And if it did, I wasn't paying attention. All those pelts and you didn't learn about a one. Well, <laughs> fur is murder, so you know what? I think I did my part, okay? You're ignorant of the pelts. Just making sure all our cameras are still working. Yeah. Um so so wrestling i mean i'll brush up on the pelts for later because i do respect canadian wrestling i'll say that i was gonna say i wonder if jericho and them know about the the pelts oh jericho's probably got a whole thing about the pelts i don't really want to get him started on it to be honest with you yeah jason momoa was in uh, a show about the pelts Uh, it was like a tv show that was very short-lived i can't remember what it was called peacemaker 
No. Okay, he was in Peace. Spoiler, he shows up in Peacemaker. Oh, wow. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Uh, I'm not that far. Uh, you watched no. the whole of Peacemaker, I thought. I know, but I didn't... I No, I didn't see all of Peacemaker. I think oh. season... I didn't see season two. You didn't... There's not a season two. Oh. There's only one Maybe season. I didn't finish season one. It's only like eight episodes, I think. <laughs> okay, whoops. It's just... And it's, I enjoyed it, which is the worst part. It's in the very last scene spoilers for peacemaker you should watch it it's a good show i like how you're like spoilers for you person i'm talking to who hasn't yeah. seen it who i'm about to spoil it for <laughs> well i've already spoiled that he's there but that's just look at just look at it just look at it look at the show so aquaman shows up at the end of peacemaker it's just a cameo appearance from aquaman so there's a Does point he pop out of the there's toilet a point where the justice league shows up and it's like Superman and Wonder Woman are like Ooh, silhouetted. Cool. And I th- oh, I they're silhouetted because yeah. they couldn't book Gal Gadot, but they could book yes. Jason Momoa. That's crazy. And then they got Jason Momoa and Ezra Miller. So they got Aquaman and the Flash, and they have like a line or two each. Um, and it's actually a big payoff because for the whole of Peacemaker, they keep making fun of Aquaman um, and talking about how we have sex with fish. Um, I can't believe they couldn't book Ben Affleck for that day. Maybe they didn't want. I I feel like What's Batman Ben wasn't Affleck even- doing. I don't know. He's going writing. shopping with JLo. Maybe. He's doing uh he's doing uh Dunkin' Donuts commercials with um uh Ice Spice. Yeah, that guy has time. He does have time. He could have he could have done a walk on as Batman he could for have. that. Come on. He probably offered. They could have gotten a lot I, of people I, with Batman. I think that if they if he'd offered, they would have taken it. But that's true, you're right. Uh anyway. He's writing Goodwill Hunting too. <laughs> Goodwill Fishing. I never saw Goodwill Hunting. Neither have I. It's a. Uh, I feel wow. like I have to like pretend like I've seen it. We should for watch years. it. We should watch it. it, it I think yeah, I've seen I think the in, very like, end. in like two and a half hours, we can have this problem solved, and yeah. we never have to pretend. I don't even we've think it's that it. long. That was before they made movies two and a half hours. That was. I like, think it's about two hours because I it's almost probably about two hours. I but, almost watched it the other night actually, but wow. I was like, I wanted something that was like under two hours. I remember. I, I used like, to be like a lot. I remember watching the Indiana Jones movies recently, and I was like. You know, these are like big epic movies, and I remember like, oh man, there's so much happens in these movies, and I'm watching them. I'm like, these are all like right at two hours, because that used to be yeah a super epic movie was yeah. two hours long. Well, uh, and most movies are like an back, hour and a half. But if you go back even farther, you have the biblical epics that yeah, are like true. three and a half hours, three didn't four have hours to do, long. You know, so it was like, and you got go an inter- you got a proper intermission. Yeah, because those movies, those old movies, have actual intermissions cut in. Yeah, like the Ten Commandments or Ben Hur yeah. or whatever. And Which then, uh, I always thought was a great idea. Uh, I went to see 2001 A Space Odyssey, like, I guess it was like seven years ago at this point, when move, in the height of Movie Pass, and they had the intermission. Another biblical epic. Yeah. Speaking of really long events that should have intermissions, um, wrestling. Yeah, wrestling. <laughs> Every wrestling event, <laughs> WrestleMania especially. WrestleMania, they were like, look, the intermission is... Saturday and then Sunday. You the got, intermission you got a, is you, Sunday morning. Sunday morning is the intermission. You got an intermission. Okay, we built Go it in. Go get some sleep and eat some food and come back here at like three o'clock tomorrow. And then eat some very expensive food here. I can't wait yeah. to get a Philly cheesesteak. Whatever shitty Philly cheesesteak they have at a uh, at um, Lincoln Field. Yeah. If you a, hey, if anybody watching this has any recommendations for the Lincoln Field, uh, you know. Or recommendations food. for Philadelphia in general because I'm not going to Lincoln Field. I'm just going to go in Lincoln. I'm just going to sleep at Lincoln Field. That's my plan. I don't know what you were going to do. I mean, I'm going to stay in the hotel room we paid for, but I guess if you're intent on breaking the law and having a very uncomfortable night's sleep... Um, I'm going to sleep on the field. <laughs> it's funny because it's like you would break in and then would you just sleep in your own assigned seat? <laughs> Yes, yeah, my seat. Because it's like it's not like you're gonna get a jump on. It's not like a GA concert where you're like, I'm gonna camp out in the front row. It's like, sir, th- you you could go home and sleep. And nobody come back else and is using it. Is anybody else sleeping there? I booked this seat <laughs> for WrestleMania Night One. Booked a different seat for WrestleMania Night Two. I mean, two. honestly, there is an argument to be made. You're like, I paid hundreds of dollars. This seat caught. Co- I'm the seat probably did cost more than a night in a hotel room. Your seat. Honestly, and it, I was not, I don't think I realized how much money I was spending on yeah. WrestleMania. Would I do it again? Almost certainly not. But you know what? It's like wrestling Christmas. It's it literally is. Christmas where it's like. It's a holiday. Would I have spent this money any other for any other reason? No. <laughs> but it was Christmas, so exactly. I just bought it for myself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the, and also, to be fair, the last two times I went to WrestleMania, I paid pretty little 
Mm-hmm. I paid like almost as little as you could pay. Yeah. And got like very far back seats. So this is like the thing that sucks now is, is that it's two nights. Yeah. So you end up having to spend and I got like a second ticket very late. So it was like very uh is more expensive than i think it needed to be yeah but you know You're we're s- here to support wwe a, a reputable company that's done, been done nothing but great great humanitarian things for everyone involved um yeah john likes to support them and their product uh and he's so he's spending like a Times square new year's eve amount of money on a hotel room at lincoln field <laughs> uh whereas i'm spending more like hostel for a week money um <laughs> it, to go see the gcw collective yeah. um shows in philadelphia in a couple weeks we won't have a show until then so that's why i'm letting people know we'll yeah. be there because we'll be live on the scene because we next week is easter and uh we're gonna be your moms yeah, so that's we right. won't be able to and do my mom this. doesn't watch wrestling so we can't have her on the show yeah that's why we can't have her on the show yeah <laughs> i would love to give my mom a live mic uh because <laughs> these actually are not live mics this is not live no no i i can edit this and do um heavily sometimes because you've just sometimes you lose it you know and, I, and you're I leaving to, my I, diatribes in right I john if i left your diatribes in we would be shunned from society what you gotta leave my diatribes in no like this one no. anyway after that uh <laughs> man i went off for like an hour on that one yeah anyway i'm tired uh yeah so we're gonna we're, yeah well i was i was saying we're going to wrestlemania we're going to gcw the collective mm-hmm. we're gonna see um uh tgpw together yeah tokyo joshi pro wrestling are in town i wanted to go um, to see ddt but it's, i'm gonna I, see ddt it's just it's a lot i spent a lot of money i i've i've also spent a lot of money for me Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, uh, what else are we going to see? Ring of Honor. We're going. We're going oh, to we Ring, of, Ring Honor. of Honor. This basically the secret AEW show for the head. Yeah, um, it gets to be like AEW gets to be there without being yeah. there. You know. So I am missing Joey Janela's spring break to go to the Ring of Honor. That is show. one of the biggest of the GCW shows as well. Yeah, to to Ring of which Honor I show. feel bad about, but I'm like, I at that point I feel like I'm going to want a seat anyway because I'm doing GA for the GCW shows. And I'm confident that I will see most of the talent that's booked on spring break in the other shows. I would imagine that most of the talent is going to work. They just change the combinations. Yeah. I remember watching a lot of the collective shows last year mm-hmm. uh, and it just seemed like they were just moving people around. Yeah. Uh, and they were on almost every show anyway. Yeah, exactly. Joey Janela spring break will have like a little bit different. I mean, those spring break shows, I think were kind of part of the reason that GCW got so big. Um, and why Janela got big as well because he was he was doing those shows. Yeah, really it's a fun show. And um, and then on Sunday I'm gonna try to go to WrestleCon. WrestleCon? Yeah. Is that where they con you out of stuff? Uh, they have a sh- they actually WrestleCon has a show at the 2500 Arena, but it's on like Thursday night at seven. 2300. Arena. When I have or 2300? I think it is. Yeah, the uh, the oh. CW Arena. Okay. Yeah. 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 I thought it was unless they changed it, but it was um. But uh, yeah, no, they're they're there on Thursday night at like seven. I think that makes sense. But, uh, like one of the that's the same night as DDT or something like that. And I was like, I I'm gonna go. DDT will probably to, be more fun. Yeah, I, I'm more interested in the stuff that I can't see. Yeah, DDT's not here all the time. Um, yeah, and it'll be it'll be different people, and they do like wacky, silly stuff. Yeah, um, and I feel like the WrestleCon Super Show. I don't know. I don't know what the card is, but like, um. I don't know. I, I imagine it'll be an eclectic mix because it's WrestleCon. Like, you know, it'll just be a bunch of random people. Yeah, anybody. I don't know. I don't know. I might be there. I, I might even wrestler. Yeah. But I like wrestling. Yeah. So maybe I'll be there. So maybe. Come see me at WrestleCon. But anyway, so this past, uh, so. Uh, what happened this past couple of weeks? Yeah, I guess. Well, what do you want to talk about first, John? Well, so I usually, uh, I'll start off with a nice a- AEW. <laughs> start off with a nice AEW. And then we'll uh, continue on to WWE. Uh, and then we'll touch on the New Japan Minute. Okay. And then uh, maybe check in for ROH. We'll maybe. See what happens. Maybe. We'll see what happens. Let's see if we have time. Don't know if I have enough time. Remember that from old school? Remember yeah. That? Remember that? Mm-hmm. That's been in my head for at least 20 years. Anytime I think about having enough time, it's just Will Ferrell. And it always will be. 
Ah, anyway, that, that's that's saying a lot because it's crowded in your head. There's a lot going on. You I have got a lot of guys of, up there. You have a lot of information up there. I do have a lot of information. A lot of information about wrestling. A uh, lot of information about your daily life because you don't write anything down again. That's like, true. So I don't. Like, you know, I don't use calendars. I just don't. like remember just what I'm remember. supposed to do. Yeah. But I have a good memory. With mixed so, results. <laughs> well, so I usually remember everything. It's just because I usually have like a good memory, so I can usually just remember most of the mm-hmm. stuff I have to do. Uh, but it's going to really come back to haunt me one day because one day like my memory is going to start to go and I'm just going to be totally screwed. Um, yeah. Or, but, or I'm going to stop texting to remind you to do things and then, well, that was just the thing we just didn't think about at all. So anyway, I will, I'll try to use a calendar. Sometimes I use one at work. Wow. But only if somebody else makes the event. Oh my God. But if I have to do it, I just like, yeah, I gotta do that. As, as a Virgo, and as a person who worked as an assistant for a very long time, um, it's just so foreign to me as a lifestyle. To just remember what you have to do? <laughs> yeah, well, because you don't. No, well, I'm, not that you don't specifically, but like I don't believe that that's possible. It's a very bad I, idea for someone that has and really it bad anxiety. Really stressful because I would. I already spend so much time walking around Earth thinking I forgot something, and so writing things down makes me feel better. So it's like it feels like it would just be a life of just constant feeling that way. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the way I live my life is bad. It's not. It doesn't. Uh, it's not conducive to someone who should be treating their anxiety or uh, easy. You know, I feel like I make a lot of things harder for myself. Well, but that's how I heard it here first, folks. Really had a breakthrough. (laughs) Uh, But it's how I am. Anyway, um, AEW happened. (laughs) And so uh, here's my thing. So I really enjoyed Dynamite. I have to say there was no collision on this week. And I love collision. It's one of my favorite shows that happens every week. It's almost always just like super fun. Uh, I was relieved. You were elated. I was relieved to not have to watch Collision. To the point where I was like, "You said I, that's I almost sick. did an, I almost did an intervention right then and there because I've never seen someone like. Sometimes I, I like. You called me sick. I think well, because I was like, uh, to paraphrase what I think I remember saying to you last night, I was like, it, "It's your hobbies are supposed to be fun." You know, things that bring you joy that you look forward to. Supposedly. Not things that you're like, ugh. It's not homework. You know what I mean? Isn't it, though? No, it's not. Sometimes it's all <laughs> it's right. It's the for opposite it to be. of homework. Sometimes you got to watch everything in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, yeah. So, anyway, uh, yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Anyway. But I was relieved. You're right. I was very relieved. You were so uh, relieved. And to I'm, not have to watch a two hour wrestling show. Um, and to have my it's just really because it's on Saturday nights. That's where I, I that's why it's like frustrating. Not that I like make sure that I watch Collision every Saturday, but especially when we're doing the podcast, it's like, mm-hmm. well, I want to watch it before we do the podcast. So even if I'm like, I don't feel like watching it this Saturday, or I'm gonna like be somewhere because I was out, so I couldn't watch it live. Yeah. Um. So I was like, oh, I have to watch it at like 11 p.m. or whatever. Um. Or I have to like kind of scramble and watch. It is a great Sunday morning watch. I will say Sunday morning collision. That's kind of probably the best way to watch they it. They should play a rerun of it on Sunday morning. They should. What else is go? What else is happening on TNT on Sunday mornings? Right. Sports probably. Yeah, but this is a sport entertainment. Yeah. It's a wrestling sport. They don't call it the entertainment thing. They don't say that. First of all. There are some th- sports entertainers in AEW. There are. Well, there used to be. Jericho hasn't talked about that anymore. And Daniel Garcia, he's still doing his little dance, but he calls himself a wrestler again, I think. Okay, all right. I did the little Daniel Garcia thing. Okay. Um, yeah, so anyway, you were relieved to not have to watch one of your favorite shows. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was very happy to not have to watch uh, a thing, you know, uh, that I love. And I was, you know, I'm still happy. Honestly, I'm just, I'm glowing. Positively glowing. Uh, but it was fine. But, you know, it was fine. Because uh, Dynamite was great, and they had a little, a fun little rampy. One little live dynamite. Ra- I also wasn't didn't get to watch that live, so I was. Uh, I was really. I really. You know, I'm sorry, AEW. I didn't contribute to the ratings this week, and I apologize for that. Yeah, I didn't either. Technically, I was bad. Um, I was bad. I'm sorry, Tony. But I'm gonna blame him because he started watching it and then paused it to go to work, and then I felt bad. I didn't want to like watch it and then like screw up your place where you were. You'd been watching it. Oh yeah, that was my fault. So yeah, that's all his fault that I didn't watch it either. But I you watched, watched some of it. I watched some of it, and I watched Ring of Honor. Yeah, see, you watched Ring of Honor, and I guess I watched most of Ring of Honor with you. Yeah. Um, do you like 
that's just recounting our week on the podcast. I love that. Me? Isn't that what people do? Yeah. I don't know. What else do we have to offer people? Another diatribe. So, <laughs> here's what I think. <laughs> anyway, oh, I hope you I left all that in. I, I absolutely cannot believe that you said even half of that. Okay. I believe it. I stand by it. I won't apologize. All right. So, here's the thing about Cope Cage 3. So, they had Adam Copeland versus Christian Cage 3. Oh, I saw as this. As they kept saying. Uh-huh. Uh, and it was big. It was the I Quit match for the TNT Championship. Mm-hmm. Spoiler. Jason Momoa shows up as Aquaman. <laughs> Uh, no, but spoiler. I would have loved that. I mean, but you know what's funny is if Jason Momoa showed up in AEW, your immediate thought would be like, holy shit, Roman Reigns is here. Yeah. <laughs> and there's no way you wouldn't think that first. Yeah. Uh, so he can never do it. Yeah. It just wouldn't have the same shock. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but Adam Copeland and Christian Cage, they had their match. It was a TNT championship match. I quit match. Uh, very kind of like WWE, but it was like fun because they could kind of take the gloves off a little bit. They had a little hockey fight, which was great. They did some crazy stunts. It was a very good match. Um, Christian got hit in the balls, but that wasn't when he quit. He got quit when he almost got hit in the face. So uh, with the uh, spike, spike, yeah, that big, yeah. Um, that big two by four, which was bordering on silly, but it worked. It had in- an incredible amount of nails in it. Yeah, and he really hit him with it too. I yeah. mean, I don't know. Christian's it's pretty scary looking balls tool. of steel. Uh, I thought that the patriarch was going to want to protect his his ability to, you know, mm-hmm. but it was his face. Uh, so he, anyway, uh, they had that match. It was great. But here's the thing. Adam Copeland kept saying Cope Cage 3. And technically, it's Cope Cage 4. <gasps> because they had another match at, uh, at World's End. It was two matches. Remember? Because it was the one match was the most of the match that they had. And then Adam Copeland won the title. And then Christian made Luchasaurus kill switch. Right. Uh, give him his title shot that he'd earned earlier in the night. And so they oh. had another teeny little match where oh. Christian went back. So technically that was three. This was four. Oh. Tony. Oh. I think we're not watching. We're watching. Cope. Tony. Do you even watch wrestling, bro? Yeah, of course like, I do. Bro. Do you even watch wrestling? Uh, so that's my note on that. Yeah, watch well, your numbers. Great takeaway. I I Thank thought you. it was fun, and I thought uh, it was a good match. It and was. I, uh, I like these guys together. They're I'd they're look. good with the drama. Like Edge's promo leading up to this was Adam Copeland. Uh, or we're gonna get sued. <laughs> they can't sue me. I have no money. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna? S- it's like suing a tree. <laughs> what are you gonna get out of it? Trees have uh, more paper than you. Yeah. Really. Hey. Uh, you probably would actually get more like, you know, you liquid, liquid value out of a tree than yeah, you, you would me. Um, but, uh, he gave a promo b- leading up to this that I thought was really great. It was theater. It was oh yeah a story. They were showing pictures of them as kids yep. being friends back in Toronto, you know, Toronto, Tor- Toronto, Toronto. Uh, yeah, no, it was great. It was, I feel like Adam Copeland's Canadian accent has been coming out more lately. It d- he does that, sound like, extremely Canadian. Li- like I saw that Collision promo, and I don't know, like, you know, twenty years ago, or whatever, when he was heel Edge and all this stuff. Like, and when they were the when they were a tag team twenty five years ago, and they were doing their their whole, you know, for the benefit of those with flash photography and all that stuff. I f- mm-hmm. I feel like I didn't hear, but now he's like very Canadian. Mm-hmm, yeah, super Canadian. He's really, Maybe it's being around Christian, Christian teach, you know. Christian, I feel like sounds less Canadian. I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe well. Maybe backstage he turns it on. John Cena was always funny because when John Cena would go, he would have the flattest like American broadcaster accent, you know, all uh-huh. the time. And then when they would be in Boston, he would be like, you know, he would have a Boston accent, mm-hmm. really hard. Um, but you know, uh, that was that's you know maybe he's just like being himself more now. Yeah, the radar super. He's not Edge anymore. He's Adam Copeland. Taz did call him Edge on commentary, though, which is very funny. And then they immediately were like, Ugh. And I call him Edge on this podcast. It is. I'm shocked that I have been as good as I have been about calling him Adam Copeland, like even in my head and not just constantly referring to him. Even as, in I'm your only, head, you police yourself? No, I'm just saying like I, the way I think of his name. Like I think like, oh, Adam Copeland. And I don't think, you know, that he's Edge, which is funny because I've known him only as Edge my entire life. 
That is Since funny. Since the day I was born, he's been etched back in. And you remember you know. it without even writing it down. Yeah, exactly. I don't. See, that's the thing. I don't have to write all the rest. You write all the wrestlers' names down so you can remember them. And I don't. Oh, famously, I do not. And famously, I forget people's names all the fucking I know. time. <laughs> The Trish Stratus, Tiffany Stratton. I mean, God, the, that was Alexa hard. Bliss, Liv Morgan. I mean, okay. It's not that you. So I'm, actually, better at, be, I'm better at Alexa Bliss and Liv Morgan than I used to be, except for the fact that they do look exactly like. So sometimes I will see clips online, like very short social media clips, and yeah. fully not know which one of them it is. They did look exactly um, like, and they both spent multiple years, I think cosplaying harley quinn yeah uh, so no, they was, both kind of had the same thing going on but Liv is more I, f- I feel like Liv's been distinguishing herself more and i can i can more easily she has her. she's a rebel now she's an outlaw yeah ever since she got arrested for weed i've i've really like kind of zeroed in on her and been yeah. like oh okay that's who that is and you, also she's friends with mjf you know yeah. like i just i just know more about her now yeah. you know you have four two zeroed in on her Ooh, ooh nice great nice uh yeah no well to be fair though you don't just you're not forgetting their names you're just mixing them up a lot yeah and tiffany stratton and trish stratus to be fair are very similar names trish stratus tiff stratton it's Mm -hmm. too much yeah and it's purposely similar because i'm certain when they think of these names they have like a little formula they use and they probably have um they probably have a certain kind of wwe mouth feel that they want every name to have, you know? Yeah, they want, like, good, cool names like Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes and Michael McGillicuddy, you know? Like, those yeah. classic... And, and Butch. Husky Harris, yeah, and <laughs> Butch. And uh, it's just so funny because sometimes they, like, do make names better and they give people, like, really cool and names. And the Viking Raiders. Oh, my God. The Viking Experience was what the they were. The Viking first. Experience. So they were War Machine. Yeah. And then when they came to WWE, they, mm-hmm. like, changed that because that's a Marvel character. That's also the name of, like... a attempted murder uh yeah. mma guy mm. who tried to kill his ex-girlfriend um mm. and a, a guy she was dating or something uh so they were like let's change this name mm-hmm. so they changed them to war raiders yeah. which doesn't really mean anything but sounds kind of cool and then classic vince mcmahon going when they go from nxt now that they've workshopped something which is again what they always would do with vince mcmahon with nxt they would use it to develop and then as soon as they would come up to the main roster, he would get rid of anything that they had developed, totally change their name and their gimmick and send them out to sink or swim. And then when they couldn't do it, they would yep. get punished for it because it's like, it'd be like if you're, you know, working to get to the tonight show and, you know, you know to do stand up or something or whatever, late night, something, some big thing. And then you're like, okay, we're doing this comedy central presents special. You're doing an HBO and Netflix special. Uh, you can't use any of your jokes that you wrote. You have to do all new jokes they're telling you this as you're about to go on stage because it literally would happen a lot of times. It would be like mm-hmm. the day of. You're like getting ready. And they're like, we're changing your name. Vince wants to change your name. Yeah. And you want to change this thing. And it's just like they change it immediately before you go on stage. And it's like, why didn't you kill? Anyway, but they were the Viking experience. I, I greatly appreciate you making that relatable for our audience by comparing it to doing stand up on, no, yeah. on The Tonight Show. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've all been there. Yeah. Yeah. We've all been there. Uh, anyway. Should we talk about Okada? So uh, the Triple Crown, the Continental Crown, is no more. The big thing they made a whole big deal about with the World's End, with the whole or the Continental Classic. Remember that they were like it's gonna be an American Triple Crown. It's the Ring of Honor World Championship. What happened? The NJPW Strong Openweight Championship, AEW Continental Championship. They just decided to. So Eddie was always defending the titles together, mm-hmm. and they were referring to him as the Continental Crown Champion. And then this time, I think they just wanted to give Okada a title, and they realized that. I think where they screwed up is, A, one of the titles was, they never said this is going to be permanent, to be fair. They just were talking about it for the Continental Classic. Uh, and the Continental title is still going to be defended in the Continental Classic every year. So whoever the champion is when that tournament starts is going to be in it. Mm-hmm. And if they, lose, if they don't win the tournament, they lose the title. Mm. Um, so if they don't make it to the finals or whatever, you know that they're no longer the champion. Yeah. Um, so I think where they messed up is, A... One of the titles is from another promotion. It is probably one of the titles that New Japan cares the least about, but still is a New Japan title. And after AEW like rated their entire main event roster, they're probably like, Man, can we get our belt back at least? <laughs> um, so I think that they probably, that's part of it. And also Ring of Honor, they're still trying to make it, you know, its own thing. And it wasn't like the TV title or something. It was the world title. So I think they're like, me. we maybe sometimes want to have the world champion of Ring of Honor be different than this 
you know, like a mid card title in AEW. So I can understand why they'd want to break it up. And they're just kind of Tony Khan's just kind of no selling it too. They a- people asked him like directly about it, like why? Because Okada just like this is the first time that Eddie had defended one of the titles separately from the other two, mm. uh, and Okada won it. And they were like, "What's going on with this?" And he was just like, "Yeah, so it's still Continental Rules. You can't have a- anybody with you at ringside, uh, and you'll defend it in the Continental Classic." Um, and everybody and he just didn't mention the other two titles, so it's just mm. no more. Which I am kind of fine with. It was cool for that time, but. Um, you know, I'm fine with it just being separate titles. I wanted the ROH World Title to be its own thing, uh, and it's good for them to have. I know they have a lot of belts, but it's like they have such a huge roster. Yeah, uh, and it's good to have stuff. And Okada is going to be a good champion because he is. He kind of needed to do something like this right away. But I love mm-hmm. that Okada is just like this piece of shit who's like cheating to win and all this stuff, and he's just like a little dickhead with the Young Bucks. They keep calling him Rainmake, which is fun. He's the Rainmaker. Um, yeah. It's yeah. funny because they yell at people for not use, calling him the Rainmaker Kazuchika Okada, but they just call him Rainmake. Well, that's just one of the many ways in which they are hypocrites. jerks. They yeah. are. They're hypocrites. Um, Mercedes is back. Mercedes is back and she's starting a little feud with Willow. Isn't that fun? Yeah, that is fun. It carries over from their, uh, their New, New Japan, Japan Strong Women's uh, final match where Mercedes injured herself and had to kind of in the match call it for willow instead yeah. uh and willow beat her when she wasn't supposed to mm-hmm. um thoroughly confusing the referee very much confusing the referee yeah um and causing the audience to boo because the ref counted to Pe- three people really don't like when or didn't count to three excuse me he didn't really don't like when the rules get broken like when the not the rules of like the match but like the rules of the reality of it yeah because it's like everything kind of hinges on us knowing that the match is over when the three count happens. And yeah. so if you don't count the three, it just kind of makes it all, it breaks. It's kind of like, it, it feels very similar to like when a character in a movie or a TV show is like, Oh, it was all a dream. Yeah. It's like, well, Oh, so the, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, cause the ref did mess it up. Too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was like, you know, it's like being in a Broadway show and not hitting your mark, you know, mm-hmm. missing your cue. He missed his cue. He did miss uh, his cue. I mean, in everyone's defense, that was just an unfortunate situation. I don't blame anyone. Mercedes made the right call. Willow did the right thing. The referee was did just they ever, like... She, not, she hasn't addressed... I, I feel like they've just pretended that didn't happen. Like that that ref mistake didn't happen. Yeah, I think I would. Because I've never I've to. never seen a... Cl- like, it's very hard to find clips of it online. I think probably if you go back and watch the event, you probably can see it. Yeah, but I, like, I doubt it. New Japan would have you really can't out. find a clip of it anywhere. And like... There's no need to really acknowledge that. Well, I, I think, think I'm, I'm... The thing I would be curious to know is like what happened. You know, like, w- like did the ref... Like, be- because I've always been curious as to like... I'm Clearly, they, they both knew what was happening. The wrestlers... But the ref was not clued into what was happening. And I guess probably what they assumed is that the ref would just count to three because I guess that maybe that's what you're supposed to do. I think. But was yeah. there some sort of like like clash between like, you know, because these women are from three different promotions. Like, well, Willow and Mercedes are from two different promotions. The ref is from New Japan. Yeah. So it's like you had three different promotions. Was it a case of like, oh, this is how you would handle it in your promotion, but this is this guy was used to a different system? Yeah, I'm not of- sure. That ref is primarily I see him mostly on like New Japan Strong, like their U.S. brand, and then um, I haven't seen him as much in a- like the actual shows in Japan. But uh, I'm not sure what I don't. I'm not sure how much they communicated to him. They, I think you're probably right. They probably just assumed that he would just count. So yeah. they just didn't tell him because mm-hmm. I'm sure he knew who the referee usually, I believe, knows who's supposed to win, especially yeah. in a big match like that. Like that was the main event of the show. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so he probably was just very confused and didn't mm-hmm. want to screw up. Uh, and then, yeah, I think he just didn't realize it. I think and at least in WWE, I have heard that they are trained to just count. Yeah, because it is more important, honestly, to just have whatever happens happens to not break the reality of it. And um, and because I've seen that there was that Becky Lynch match where Becky got pinned where she wasn't supposed to by Emma was it I think maybe uh, there was like some match she was in she was tagging with Charlotte was I that think an NXT against match? I don't know I don't think it was NXT but she was tagging with Charlotte against like Emma and somebody else I think and um, Emma pinned her and she 
she had gotten her bell rung earlier in the ring. Oh right, or earlier in the match. I think you told me about this. I think yeah, because it it's in it's in her book, mm-hmm. which I can now talk about because it's coming out. I think tomorrow. Uh, right. <laughs> but uh, uh, she talks about how she hit her head mm. and she was kind of dazed. And she when she got pinned, she kind of I think was just like not in. Yeah. Back, back in, you yeah. know, fully. And uh, the ref got to three faster than she thought he would. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then they had to be like, oh, Emma won. And Charlotte was like, if you go back and watch the clip of it, it's it's pretty funny because Charlotte does look legitimately very pissed and Becky is like panicked. <laughs> oh, yeah, because she was, man, that whole NXT run for Becky feels like it was like almost felt to her like it wasn't even supposed to be happening. So she felt stressed the whole time. Mm-hmm. Um not that it was bad the whole time for her, but just like, you know, because she had stopped wrestling yeah, for several years, I think, before she joined NXT. And then she just kind of like wound up in NXT again uh, yeah, she was when tending, she thought she was she out. She was tending bar in New York City and trying to be an actress. Um, Didn't you for... say she had started to train again in wrestling? Because she had stopped wrestling, done acting, and then she was trying to do stunt work, right? Yeah. And so she started training in wrestling well, again? Well, yeah, because she was trying to do acting. She came here and did acting school. And then she... I, I, I've i read Becky Lynch's book already, which I do recommend. It was a very interesting book, and it mm-hmm. was an easy read. Um, but, yeah, she, she quit wrestling, and she was doing acting in New York and attending bar, and then she was getting into stunt work, and then that spurred her to go start training again. And then she got talked into rejoining. And, and probably one of my favorite parts of the book is when she talks about getting her WWE tryout and going to the tra- the performance center and how awkward it was for her, like seeing people like Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens uh, and people that she'd known on the indie circuit, uh, but who hadn't seen her in like six years. Cause she was out of it for like years. Yeah. She, was, she got hurt. And just, yeah. Like, well, wrestling she, for yeah. Years. She just kind of gave up cause she was like really getting beat up and her, she wasn't going anywhere. Mm-hmm. And, um, she like, I don't know if it was seven years, but it was a while. And uh, and people were reacting to her like, oh, I thought you I thought you quit. You know? <laughs> and there mm-hmm. was like a vibe of like, you can just come back like that. Uh, and just to get here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was destroying myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, Not that she wasn't. Yeah. Anyway, we should probably continue on with our AEW talk. Yeah, that's true. We're talking about WWE. This is ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, but Mercedes and Willow. It's interesting though because they uh, they're feuding with Julia Hart and uh, Sky Blue, and Mercedes is kind of helping Chris Statlander and Willow. But then like she came out to help them, mm-hmm. or they came out to help her, and there was a whole thing, and the lights went out and they were gone. But then when the lights came back up, it looked like Willow was going to maybe hit her with a chair, which was a little confusing because I'm like, why is Willow the Willow shouldn't be mad at her? You know what I mean? Like yeah. Mercedes is the one. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Mercedes Monday watch. Anyway, so that's what this has been. Uh, but so I'm I'm just confused as to uh, I don't mind Willow dabbling in like dark side, but it was just kind of an awkward. Well, uh, they are because Mercedes is the one who should be pissed at her. Yeah, she should like blame her. But they probably don't want Mercedes to be a, 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 this, a heel yet. This is what I was gonna say. They're kind of running into a similar like CM Punk thing mm-hmm. where it's like. It, well, I guess CM Punk had like MJF and there were like heels that he could feud with. There aren't a lot of like female heels in AEW right now that yeah, are like pure like, heels, you know? Other than like Tony um, Storm. Even though she's yeah. very funny, she is a heel. Yeah, there's Tony Storm and Mariah May, but and then there's the Outcast. But 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 Tony Storm's in her own thing with Deanna Peraza right mm-hmm. now. The Outcasts aren't really that relevant anymore and they're doing the Ruby Soho stuff. Yeah. And so like there isn't another heel for her to like come in and, and be the baby face too. Yeah. So they're going to have to turn Willow heel, I assume. Um, mm-hmm. And I guess the way they're doing that is by making it so that maybe she's like defensive of Mercedes's presence in the promotion. Yeah, maybe. maybe yeah. Um, that could be it. I definitely think they need to establish it a little more because if she's going to go heel, we need a little bit more, you know, they kind of missed the opportunity to make her heel when they uh, didn't, follow through with her being infected by julia hart's mist that's true like they really could have done that and she actually was wrestling a little bit heelishly yeah and i liked I it she was they like were gonna do it she was like vicious i was like oh that's how will is a heel is she'll just like destroy people yeah she was like changing up her style and it was working yeah and that could have been a really great way to like go into all this 
Um, but since they didn't do that, it's a little awkward because she is such a, and not only is she a face, she's been like reestablishing her face status with Stokely. Yeah. Like, you know, like Stokely's always trying to get him to be like more, yeah. you know, heelish and she's been like reaffirming her status as a face. Yeah. So it's even more confusing and it's like, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to turn out. I don't know. We'll see, but you're right. Cause you only want, you don't want Mercedes to anywhere near Tony Storm right now. Because it feels like they're both too big. Yeah. And you want to wait for that. And you'd be burying Deanna Peraza, who you also just signed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You want Deanna to have time to like... And Thunder Rosa. And Thunder and- Rosa's there, you know, and it's hard to mi- turn either... Well, I mean, Deanna could be a heel pretty quickly, I think, but like, because mm-hmm. it's kind of naturally what she Deanna does anyway. Deanna and Mercedes would be really fun. Yeah, that would be great. I would love to see that match. They probably will do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but hey, you know what? You know what's great, though? What? Even though we have a few little notes for it, A, they're doing the Willow Mercedes feud, which yeah. is great. And we're talking about women's storylines no, in know. AEW. And, and we're it's talking not, about multiple ones. And it's like sort of related to a championship, mm-hmm. but not necessarily 100% No, part it's of the just a story written about exactly. the women, which is very rare. Uh Honestly, I credit Mercedes. I also do credit Tony Storm because I really think this timeless Tony Storm thing yeah. has done more for the women's division than a lot of people probably appreciate. Yeah. Because it it was it's undeniable. It is. It really is it's, undeniable. You as can't ignore it. Word. It's so weird and it's so funny and it's so over. She's so committed to it. It's so over that she's, you know, yeah, like it, she she just makes a huge splash and they want her on every show, so now they have to get all these other women in the promotion to let she has people to fight. And she can follow up with like, she can wrestle any <laughs> style, but yeah, you're right. She's, um, and the Mariah May thing is set up so well. Like she gave oh, her her outfit. I and love then Mariah she's May. Eventually hope I'm saying, I think when she loses the title, she's going to start seeing Mariah May dressed as her and start being like, you try to replace me. Oh yeah. Isn't that that whole thing? There, is that yeah. part of Sunset well, Boulevard? Well, that, or that no, other? it wasn't Sunset Boulevard. It was, it was the, all about Eve was the was, one yeah. that I was talking about. Cause when they first brought her in, I thought that's immediately what they were going to do Yeah, is show her. Cause there's a famous scene in all about Eve where she walks in on the girl holding her Oscar and mm-hmm. wearing her fur coat that she was going to put away and mm-hmm. like bowing in front of the mirror. Mm-hmm. And like, Eve realizes like oh my god like she's gonna, gonna try and me, steal yeah. my thing um, and I just was like oh clearly this is going towards her walking in on Mariah May holding her belt and like you know pretending to be winning something and yeah. then Tony can freak out uh, so yeah, and I I'm love Mariah May can I just I say I really think Mariah she's May great. is such a fucking star she's what great. a star mm-hmm. sorry <laughs> she is a star and that's what's gonna bother Tony Storm She's a star. She knows she's a star. Because she's got like the she's got the whole blonde bombshell thing, mm-hmm. but she's such a hardcore wrestler. I know. That, and that's so cool to see. That shotgun drop kick she does is great. Yeah. Among other like, things, but that one really always is beats like beats people up and it's like she very stardom. They don't screw around. Yeah, and, and it's like yeah, I just think that's really cool because it's like a very uh unexpected twist to her you know because you see her come out and you're like oh yeah Yeah, you think she's gonna be like a A sunny or like like yeah i know (laughs) there's there's a million like wwe divas (laughs) that you think she's gonna be like because she looks like that yeah her gear looks like that i could see her in like 2005 wwe and like a 30 second tag team match where somebody gets rolled up and they're not allowed yeah. to do punches and kicks. Yeah. And it's like, but, but she, and then kicks she just, the shit she doesn't, out she's of a great character too. Yeah. Even beforehand. Like mm-hmm. she's great. You she know, has great presence. Yeah. No, she's great. Great she's on Mike. Anyway. Great, great signing. Um, so just to move along with our, uh, John Moxley's finally taking his little vacation. Really? Yeah. Where are they going? I don't know, but it's almost over, I think, because he's going to work Aww. a bunch of New Japan shows. But he took yeah. a cut. I think that's why he couldn't, because that was one of my notes for their tag team tournament, is they had Claudio and John Moxley beat FTR in this little feud that they had, uh, and they beat him on the pay-per-view, and it was this whole big thing, and then they weren't in the tag team championship tournament, which I thought that was the whole thing, is they were going to win the tag titles. But he's working a couple of New Japan shows, but they went on a little vacation. But you know what? Maybe he's just taking time off because I'm pretty sure Renee has been on Dynamite every week. Yeah. So uh, maybe he's just like, I'm gonna take vacation by myself. Uh, I want to go by. <laughs> I want to go by myself. I mean, he's in the he's in the pro or he was in the process like a year ago. It's probably done now. But he's been building a gym in his basement. Is that a vacation, John? That's not a, well. Maybe maybe he's, to him. Renee was talking about project. he's been building a gym. He wants like a heart dungeon style right. gym in the basement. That would be a really for cool the, place for the to Black train to be Pool wrestling. Combat Club specifically. I like how I'm thinking about it. Like, man, when I grow up. That'd be a great place to go. And John Moxley is, I believe, at least a year younger than me. 
Um, uh, well, you know, it's funny. I wonder, like, I mean, I'd be curious to see what that ends up looking like. Because I'm curious because, I mean, I imagine he's just building, like, a place to lift weights. Um, well, if he wants to train people, he could have a ring down there. Right. And But if you want to have a ring in a basement, you probably have to, like, lower the basement. Because the ceiling yeah. has to be really high yeah. for a ring to fit where you can stand on it. Like the Hardy's ring at their house is famously in like this fuck giant, like no, airplane I know. He's hanger. Got, no, I think he built a whole thing for it. Like he built like, they have so much land over there. Though. Yeah. They, they have used like to be a like, compound. It literally is like a compound. It was like Matt and Jeff each had a house there. And I think their mm-hmm. dad also had a house there. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, it was a long but anyway. Well, yeah. I, I think that's probably what John Moxley was doing on his vacation. I, it like is kind setting of setting up, it's organizing funny. the weights in his basement gym. It is funny to think of the dopey John Moxley character that we've that you've crafted that, uh, that lives in like, my head. Yeah, and then like, he's just like, ah, I gotta dig more. Yeah, <laughs> I gotta dig the basement. Oh no, no, I solved it. I dug, no, I dug I a hole in the I basement. Dig a hole. I dig a hole and, and I put just, the ring in the hole. Yeah, and then it's just a bunch of like ellipticals around it see i did a gym it's a dungeon yeah yeah. Ooh, spooky yeah spooky dungeon (laughs) um spooky moxie dungeon uh so anyway that's fun i just wanted to to note that and then just a little quick thing the motor city machine guns uh chris saban and alex shelley of tna fame Mm -hmm. apparently they're wrapping up with tna they might be somewhere bound i wouldn't mind them going to AEW, juice up the tag division a little bit uh, and they would be great to transition into like uh, backstage roles at some point. It'd be good. Uh, Alex Shelley has like a full other career. I think he did quit, but mm-hmm. for a while he became like a physical therapist, I think, or a physical trainer. Not a personal trainer, but like a phys- literally like a physical therapist. I think it was what mm-hmm. he was. So he was, and he actually like skipped a couple pay per views because of like COVID, and he didn't want to. He wanted to make sure he was good to go mm-hmm. for his job. And these were like TNA shows. I mean, these weren't like you know small shows. Yeah. Um. So, but I think he's he's wrapped that up now because he kind of like TNA pushed him a little harder. Um, but yeah, so I hope they. Uh, I wouldn't mind them showing up in AEW. That's they could cool. show up in WWE, but you know, WWE's got so much going on. And yeah, so WWE is AEW, does have so much going on. Can like Hollywood Rock is back. Hollywood Rock. Hollywood Rock. Now, Hollywood Rock has like different music. It's. You didn't the sing the thing. music for me when I asked you to. It's not a... You can't sing. There's no words. There's no words. It sounds... It's like his well, regular song. I was, you know, you can hum the melody. Hmm. 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 Wait. It's yeah. very similar to the... But it's like... I was like, going to say. You have to listen to the role. two versions. <laughs> it's very similar. He's had basically the same beat to his music mm-hmm. since like 1999 or yeah. 8. But he's... uh. This one is like a kind of a slow. I don't know want to say slower. It is kind of slower, and it's ominous. like it's more ominous because this is like the last time he was like a heel. Mm-hmm. This is when he came back. So in two thousand two, he's feuding with Hulk Hogan, and um, he had this feud with Brock Lesnar. But that was also a year when he was like pretty much like I'm gonna do movies, mm-hmm. and he was starting to wrap up like you know what he was gonna um, do wrestling wise, and so he got booed against Hogan. And also because I think people were excited to see Hulk Hogan, so they weren't going to cheer at The Rock because it was the guy that was there. You mm-hmm. know, it's like now it's like if you know you're gonna the, you're gonna cheer for The Rock, or you're gonna cheer for Roman Reigns. It's like yeah, yeah you see I mean, Roman Reigns is a bad example because he's not there either. But um, the same thing happened with The Rock and John Cena. People mm-hmm. cheered The Rock and not John Cena, but also people were tired of Cena. And people were mad that he was kind of leaving. And then against Brock Lesnar, people were Lesnar was like the new heel. And people were viciously booing The Rock, and they were doing Die, Rocky, Die chants and all this stuff at SummerSlam, um, and heavily cheering Brock Lesnar. Uh, and The Rock came back a couple of months later in 2003, early 2003, and was like, you booed The Rock because The Rock went to Hollywood, but you know what? The Rock is a huge star, and you can all go to hell, and now I'm going to chastise you about it. And he did, and he was doing The Rock concerts where he would sing a song about it, and it was a great heel run, and he's kind of tapping into that again now. He's doing a real greatest hits, although he was like sort of a baby face in this thing, but a heel as well. But it got to some dark places, and he was he's really uh, he's talking about having uh, putting uh, like Cody out of his misery in front of his mom and all this stuff. It's really uh, Whew. he's calling himself the final boss, and the good thing Mercedes is someplace else. Yeah, the yeah. boss but Mercedes, has- who's also by the way rapped her own music. Yeah, she's a real John Cena. Yeah. 
I, I love it. I didn't think it I sounded think like so, her, but it's so kooky. I love it. It is kooky. She's doing everything. You know, she's doing, she's one of those stars, one of them, mm-hmm. their stars that they talk about. Yeah. You know, like Mariah May. Mercedes versus Mariah May. Mercedes versus Mariah May would be an amazing match. Winner gets to keep the initials. I would be so happy. <laughs> Four M's. You know, that, that would be, mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That could be uh, their tag team name. I, I'm team. sure she, after like after the Willow story wraps up, I'm sure she'll probably end up wrestling Mariah May because Tony Storm will probably make yeah, her wrestle to, Mariah exactly. May. Exactly. You have to go through um, Mariah May to get to Tony Storm. At some yeah. point, she, and also at some point, Mariah May is probably going to be the world champion. So yeah. she'll be in her own right wrestling yeah. Mercedes. Money. And Mercedes is probably going to be wrestling people like Mariah May and Stardom. It's just that she she only did a few matches for Stardom and then she got hurt. It's crazy that we're never going to get this Mercedes-Julia match. <laughs> They just feel like they're not. Never say never. That's true. That's true. At you don't know where Julia is going to show up. That's true. Uh, Julia is, I believe, going to that stardom, that uh, other Joshi promotion. Yeah, Joshi but promotion. you know what that means? It means she's probably not going to go to WWE, and she probably is available to go to other That's true. forbidden door type situations. That's true. Um, Except that Tony Khan really shit on that guy, Rossi Ogawa, when he <laughs> left stardom, so I don't... And he's... Feels like he's probably not going to work with him, but well, we'll see. Who knows? We'll see. All right. Uh, but yeah, so The Rock is back, and uh, it's all that stuff with Cody. I think they're doing a good job keeping interest, and I've had I, whenever I watch these promos, I am enjoying them and invested. But it is like there has been a long time since that press conference to WrestleMania. Yeah. It's like a lo- I'm like just ready to do the match now. Yeah, you know I, mean? it's I like, know. That's what I was thinking watching the SmackDown promos. I was like, we, guys, we've been saying these same things for I like. Know weeks weeks and weeks and i'm just like what are what else are we gonna say like i get it you know it's like your families and you know you both aren't mad at each other you know i just yeah. i want to see i want to see what happens now and it's try. you know it's sometimes it's just like there's too much time mm-hmm. in between things it's also like they don't all need to be on tv every week yeah you, know, you can like cycle people out this is something we always say john moxley doesn't need to be on dynamite every week yeah cody rhodes the rock definitely does not need to be on smackdown every week i appreciate that he's coming but it's like, yeah. I, I don't, you know, it's probably better for him to He's not on the be board there. now. This is his job. I know. <laughs> and the movie career is, I don't want to say fizzled, but it's in a lull. I, 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 I bet he is not excited to go back to that career because of how they treated him after Black Adam, which I personally, not even being a rock stan, mm-hmm. I think that Hollywood was nasty to him about black adam they were nasty to him they were they were so nasty to him they were because there is no other like i i was shocked at how much stuff was getting leaked about him being like a diva or hard to work with or whatever coming in and like rewriting stuff and insisting on henry cavill and all that all that stuff like getting leaked shocked me because i was like there are lots of producers in hollywood who are dicks yeah. who like come in and rewrite stuff and insist on things and are hard to work with or whatever and you almost never hear about it because people are afraid of them i mean <laughs> there, like, are, there are producers wanna... and stuff that do worse stuff that yeah, people won't even exactly talk about. and people like don't want to get on their bad side but like with the rock i guess whoever leaked that like didn't care about like throwing him under the bus and like getting on his bad side forever he also probably realized at a certain point he's an outsider in hollywood exactly he's a wrestler exactly you know what i mean and it's like no I matter want- how big you get yeah i i gotta wonder if he kind of took that and went well fine screw this industry that like won't let me in even after making them all this money yeah I mean, uh, some of the most high like some of the highest grossing movies of all time saving franchises that were like dead <laughs> yeah really and so i don't blame him for if he decides he just never wants to go back to hall or doesn't for now you know and would yeah. rather just be in this own little sealed off world where he's king exactly and that's why he leaked the information about those ndas that vince had people sign wouldn't that be great that would be what a twist it was me vince i mean he is one of the only people that i don't have a memory of being of getting really mad at him because like Cena, I have all these memories of being like, why would he say that now? You know, yeah. like, it, cause it would be like a week after something horrible was revealed where Cena would be like, Vince is my best friend. Yeah. I mean, like, Cena was really like kind of going out of his way to hang out with yeah, Vince. It's like, you know, I love Vince McMahon. Yeah. <laughs> and like, and I'd be like, why is he doing this? And why is he Southern now? And the rock, 
to his credit, I don't I, like he, he got he got anything. he didn't say anything, and he got asked about it once, and he was very much like, you know, that's their business, it's their company, la 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 la. He wasn't like sitting there going, you know, Vince is a great guy, and he's my best friend. Yeah. Now I could be wrong. There could be a quote out there that I missed, but I don't remember it. So no, I think also The Rock had enough time away from Vince to realize that Vince didn't control his life anymore, and uh, shouldn't, and shouldn't, and then Cena and a lot of those guys are still too you know, tied to Vince. And a lot of them, I think, just didn't have bad experiences with him. No. And so they just were like, I don't and know. The, and he probably knows where all their bodies are buried. Yeah, I know. Even Becky had a thing. She didn't say anything in support of him, but she was just like, it's hard to reconcile because she's like, I literally only had good, exp- positive experiences with him. Yeah. And it's, it's sad that that wasn't the case for every woman in WWE and yeah. like involved in WWE. And she's like, it's just hard because I see him as this, you know, and it's, I get that. It's like you have just this one vision of a person you know, and then they're like this. And she's like, but then you're reading all this other stuff, and now I have to try to like yeah. combine these people into one person, and it's hard. Uh, and and, I, so and I, that's a much better answer. Yeah, and than, I, I do get that too. Like it's a much better answer, and it's a much better, like more understandable thing. Yeah. Because having read her book, you do, you do start to appreciate how little, because he is in her book very little. Yeah. Like, she clearly did not interact with him on a daily basis. Yeah. Like, it, he clearly was a guy who was off in an office in mm-hmm. Connecticut. And, like, every once in a while, you would hear from someone who had a message from him, but you wouldn't necessarily be talking to him every day unless yeah. it was, like, a high level, like, I'm main eventing WrestleMania and I'm talking to you about it. Yeah, you exactly. know, Like, the times when she talks about talking to Vince, it's clear that she's like nervous to do it. Yeah. Because she so rarely does it. Mm-hmm. And like, so like, I, I appreciate that and I understand it. Cause it's yeah. like, cause also like, you know, somebody asked Seth Rollins, I think like what changes without Vince day to day. And he was like, not much really, yeah. you know? And I believe that too, because it's like, yeah, they're not talking to Vince every Honestly, day. He's not there every day. He's, he's off in his office harassing people. He's harassing not- people and eating <laughs> steak wraps. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He's, you know, I mean, it's probably better without him because there's not like last minute changes. You know, it's like that's why the show is yeah. better now, too, is because it's consistent and they have a plan. Uh, yeah. And it's like they usually have a, some sort of plan with everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and I didn't I didn't write it down, but um, L.A. Knight versus AJ Styles is happening at WrestleMania. Uh, and they did do a very fun. I liked look, that cops promo. Yeah, where they did like they were supposed to shoot something with AJ Styles, and then LA Knight showed up and just like attacked him in his house, and they were mm-hmm. like, "We lost the footage there, but we got footage from the local police." And they had, yeah, I mean, honestly, the most realistic wrestling cops I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't just guys in like dollar store wrestling, like cop costumes. Yeah. Like these guys had vests. It on. wasn't people in a t shirt that said yeah. "cop." It yeah, exactly. Was like- <laughs> it was like, and they had like body cams and stuff, and then they did start cutting to like clearly WWE cameras, and yeah, and, but it was like, but still. It was very fun uh, and it was a very different type of thing and mm-hmm. it's it's also funny as you pointed out la Knights in the back of the cop car screaming like wrestlemania i'll see you at wrestlemania yeah. and it's like how many times has that happened yeah somebody in the back some... of a cop car screaming about wrestlemania i hate this time of year <sighs> so it's, it'd be you know it, it just made me think of a world where like wrestlemania is like an open invitation yeah. and so guys are just fighting in the street trying to get to wrestlemania yeah. I'll see you WrestleMania. <laughs> everybody saw spider-man one i do i do think it would be funny if in the world uh we all had the option to challenge like you you can once in your life mm-hmm. like one time challenge someone at wrestlemania mm-hmm. And you can only use it once in your entire life. Mm-hmm. So you have to really mean it and know you that you're ready to fight at WrestleMania. Yeah. And that's what WrestleMania is. It's just people settling scores mm-hmm. <laughs> that they've had their whole lives. Uh, and in that world, there are a lot of guys in the back of cop cars going, WrestleMania, I'll see WrestleMania. you at WrestleMania. I'll see you there. <laughs> We're going to have Chet versus his boss, Kyle. <laughs> uh, he really uh. means that he says be great. Be uh, great i would love that it's like the purge but fun you know yeah because right. uh, nobody dies and everybody's yeah. just like you know i'm sure there's some fun purge cr- crimes happening this it, does it all have to be violent well because you kill people in the crime. purge yeah but it's the all purge crime, is specifically right? like mur- well yeah That's but the- for some reason people take that and they're like going really hard on the murder part of it That's i've true. never understood that I'm about just the doing purge wire fraud like yeah, I was gonna I'm say too, I'm, like I'm money laundering. That's really, all I'm doing during the purge. Yeah, because that's the thing is like if I lived through the purge, I would only rob things. I wouldn't. Yeah. I wouldn't want to kill anybody, no matter no. how mad at somebody I was. Like I don't. 
I don't. Th- I feel like most people probably would do that. Yeah, like I, I mo- have very a really, few people would default to murder. Yeah, I have a really hard time believing we'd all start killing each other. I think yeah. most people would just loot Best Buy. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and you just have like the National Guard surrounding the Best Buy. <laughs> yeah, exactly to protect their profits. Yeah, um, but uh, but yeah, that's I. But here's the thing about AJ Styles versus LA Knight. Here's my pitch for the for the the stipulation, mm-hmm. right? Because it's the two initials guys. Yeah. First of all, CM Punk is hurt. Make him the special guest referee. Oh, I know what this is going to be. Right? And then the loser of this match can no longer use initials. I knew it. They have to go by their full name. It's a full name match. Going forward. Alan James Styles <laughs> or Lawrence Alexander Knight. And they have to do no more initials. I thought his name was Los Angeles Knight. I if it is, we'll find out after WrestleMania if he loses. I would love it if it was Los Angeles. Los least. Angeles or Los, Al- Los Alamos. Los Alamos <laughs> night. That sounds like a, oh, I've had a couple of Los Alamos nights. It's, Louis- it's Louisiana that. night. That doesn't even, oh yeah, you're right. It is LA. It's that is Louisiana the, night. Yeah, it's not even two words. Mm-mm. It's one big word. It was a postal abbreviation. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's my pitch for that. And yeah, get yeah. CM Punk in there as the, as the, the guy, as the, um, the uh, the referee, yeah, Christopher Martin Punk. Yeah, I usually go Charles Montgomery because it's Mr. Burns, but Christopher well, Martin. Well, Chick is funny. Magnet, really. It's chick so. Magnet, yeah. Cookie Monster was the other. He thing. loves chickens. Yeah, and baby chicks just come he up. He loves to him. chickens and science. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and so I'm glad that Naomi has a story. Wow, what a segue! You know, well, we're yeah. talking about WWE. I feel like we should move it yeah. along. Yeah, no, it uh, is good. I like, I like her being the damage control thing. I like mm-hmm. the damage control thing. I like the Bailey has friends. They're also because um, also they're friends. She's friends with Bailey in real life, so exactly. it's very sweet. And it's I like that they're doing a thing that here's a, like a thing that WWE didn't used to do, and they're doing now is like they're acknowledging history, and they're like mm-hmm. people's what people have done matters. Yeah, so it's not just immediate that all the good guys are friends. Yeah. Bianca, who is probably going to do a Drew McIntyre heel turn, basically, which I think is it's a very similar thing to the Jey Uso Drew McIntyre thing, where like Jey Uso wanted, you know, to make amends mm-hmm. and a fresh start, and everybody was like accepting of it, including like Sami Zayn, his friend yeah. or whatever, and then people like Drew McIntyre are like, no, you spent years screwing everyone over, you screwed me over, I'm not going to forgive you, and now Drew McIntyre is the heel. So it seems like what Bianca is kind of doing is like, no, you spent two years screwing everybody over. And because they cr- remember they showed up the first time to like attack Bianca mm-hmm. um, at SummerSlam. That was when Damage Control first showed up. Mm-hmm. So she hates them. And she, Naomi's like, I get that. But, you know, so I love them acknowledging the history. And I think Bianca's probably going to turn heel because we haven't seen a heel Bianca Belair on the main roster in almost ever, I don't think. No, I don't think we ever have. She's always been a big baby face. And, uh, so that'll be interesting to see. Yeah. I'd like to see her as a heel. And it seems like they may be doing um, um, Bianca and Naomi possibly against um, Kabuki Warriors. Yeah. Tag titles at, that'll uh, be at exciting. WrestleMania. That'll be fun. Um, but I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. Isn't Sami Zayn injured? Didn't you tell me that? He was, but he's not anymore. Oh, that okay. was like a while ago. Oh, he healed. He got yeah, better. Yeah, he healed. Yeah. Okay. He did one of those. He did a. He took a health potion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, he got a stim pack. That's yeah, great. Yeah, he got a stim pack. <laughs> yeah. For all you fallout heads. Uh, and so he's, uh, people are upset, you know, they're not sure if Sami Zayn is the right challenger for Gunther at WrestleMania because a lot of people wanted Chad Gable and Sami Zayn is kind of above the Intercontinental title at this point. Mm. Um, a lot of people, myself included, would like to see Sami Zayn in the, like, the world title picture, Mm. but, um, it kind of makes sense. It's like a prominent spot for him. He deserves a big spot. I mean, Sami Zayn versus Gunther is probably going to be an incredible match. Yeah. I mean, there's no, but a lot of people wanted Chad Gable to finish the story. And win that IC title because it's also like that's probably this is not an insult to Chad Gable probably like a a huge thing for him whereas Sami Zayn he's already done it you know and it's Sami Zayn feels like he has more of a ceil- like a higher ceiling mm-hmm. um, so a lot of people want Chad Gable to win but the whole thing is I think Gunther was supposed to face Brock Lesnar for the title at, for the Intercontinental title at mm-hmm. uh, WrestleMania and he was probably gonna retain so I'm wondering if they didn't want Chad Gable to just like lose again, because it would be such like a heartbreaking thing to have him win all, get all the way back to WrestleMania and then lose again yeah. on this huge stage. So I'm wondering if Sami Zayn is there to like take a high profile loss. Cause Sami Zayn can lose to Gunther and it's okay. Yeah. Um, you know, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe Chad Gable is going to win at backlash France. 
Which is also probably going to be Maybe. a pretty big show. I mean, honestly, that's the I don't first, know. I mean, you know, it's probably going to be a huge show. Here's honestly. the thing: like, Sami Zayn has weaknesses. I saw Many. Sami Zayn lose a match because he got tra- trapped in a giant mouse trap. That's true. He does have weaknesses. He has. Gunther should watch that match. Yeah, I mean, if Gunther wants to beat Sami Zayn, all he needs is a giant hand, a nut kicking machine, and a big mouse trap. A nut kicking machine. My ex girl. No. <laughs> mm. Hey, you got to cut that. All right, out too. you know what it is time for. The New Japan Minute? The New Japan One Minute. Okay, here we go. We're going to the New Japan One Minute. He tried to put five minutes on the timer earlier. I I saw him. The timer defaults at five minutes. Yeah. So when you go to the timer at at Google Timer or whatever... It starts oh, at, blame Google. Blame well, Google. They're easy you to do blame. that a lot. Well, they're you easy to do blame. That a lot. They're easy to blame. Okay. Okay. So the New Japan Minute starts now. So Yoda Suji won the New Japan Cup, uh, which is cool. A lot of people kind of wanted Hiroki Goto to win because David Finley got sick. He seems to be okay now. He's going to be on some shows coming up. So he's, but he had to go to the hospital. He said to pull out the New Japan Cup. So Hiroki Goto got to the finals when he probably wasn't supposed to. And he's the, like this guy who like never won the title. He's kind of like, uh, you know, um, Another world champion who has never won the title. A lot of people wanted him to win the world title. Uh, and so it seemed like maybe he was going to win it, but he didn't. Because uh, Yoda Suji won. Yoda Suji is this big up-and-coming star. He's probably the most ready of the young New Japan guys to be a star. So this is a good test run for him. But I don't think he's going to win because Naito, Tetsuya Naito, the world champion in New Japan, has a match coming up against John Moxley in Chicago. So it seems like they're probably going to want that to be a title match. I'm not sure. This is probably Naito's last run. But it's a good test for Yoda Suji. Uh, Sakura Genesis the same day as WrestleMania Night 1. <laughs> It's on in the morning, so I guess I'm going to try to watch it or just avoid spoilers because I really want to see this next big New Japan show. And John Moxley and Jack Perry are going to be at that show, and they're going to be at um, uh, uh, Windy City Riot, and it's fun. Time is up. I like how you spent, like, 55 seconds on the first bullet point and then, like, panicked and had to really quickly say the last <laughs> That was. I realized I wanted to say most of the stuff about the first bullet point, luckily. Mm, that's uh, good. The other two weren't much. That's good. Um, okay, and then ROH, Hello. I thought it was supposed to be like, ro hello, like oh hello, oh ro hello, like yeah. rut row. No, like, just like you know that what was that? But wasn't that a play? Oh hello. Oh yeah, the Cole oh, Cole play. Yeah, ro hello. Oh no, oh no, you mean the Nick Kroll thing? Okay, it was yeah, Nick Kroll yeah, yeah. and Nick Kroll uh, John, and John Mulaney. I almost said John Moxley. Yeah, John, John Moxley. So good. Hey, I guess. Um, I can't think of a John Mulaney joke off the top of my head. Uh, would it be easier to do John Mulaney doing a John Moxley promo or John Moxley doing a John Mulaney joke? It would be easier to do John Moxley doing a John Mulaney joke. Okay, what's a John Mulaney joke? Um, there's a horse in the hospital. There's a horse in the hospital. Nobody knows what he's going to do. Yeah, nobody knows what he's going to do. Uh, anyway, I don't remember the wording um, of that joke exactly. But we watched, CM Honor, Punk. we watched Ring of Honor, Honor Club. CM Punk, Fragile Ego, Fragile Mind, oh, okay. Weak Mind. Weak See, that's spirit. the thing is you know you know Moxley's promos better than you know Mulaney's yes, jokes. Exactly. I was assuming the other way around. I assumed you would know more Mulaney jokes. No. I like um, John Mulaney. One time I wouldn't let him into UCB. I was interning there mm-hmm. and I didn't recognize him. And I was my first night interning and I didn't really know who he was. This was like 2008. So he wasn't as uh, much of a celebrity yet. Um, and so I like wouldn't let him because I was like panicked because he didn't have a ticket. And he had to like ask the bartender who was one of the managers to be like, oh, she was like, yeah, he's cool. And mm-hmm. he was very, 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 very nice about it. Mm-hmm. He was like, it's fine. He was totally fine. Uh, so... Not a bad word to say over here. I mean, it's John hard Mulaney. to be mean when you're like. Some people were mean sometimes. Charming and and well, I was gonna make a joke about cocaine, but then I remembered he's in recovery and I felt bad. So actually, so that's I, another I thing. He to, and John, I Moxley. tried to bail on that joke, but then I didn't have a thing to say otherwise. So now I'm just on this like road that's me weirdly explaining myself. And anyway, that's another thing he and John Moxley have in common. That what that they addiction recovery. Oh yeah, they're both in recovery. Yeah. Oh God, I want to see this now. Although Moxley Listen. always makes it sound like it's no big deal. He's like, yeah, I just stop drinking. It's, it's also funny because he starts. He always talks about it like, yeah, it sucks. He's like, I almost it's died and I would, I would, I could have died. And, yeah. Uh, but then I didn't die. And now I don't drink. And he said something about like, yeah, I mean, it sucks not being able to drink. You think it's like better, but it like kind of sucks. My, <laughs> I mean, it's like, my, you know, I'm healthier. My family's good. But like, you know, I wish I could drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, because he, he would he admitted that he drank to like numb the pain that his yeah. body was in, yeah. which would suck. Mm-hmm. Because not only are you sober, you're feeling all the pain yeah, that your yeah, body yeah. is in. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> so it really sucks. Anyway. 
All right. So we watched Ring of Honor this week. Um, I meant to just watch it me. And then he came in and watched it with me. So. Yeah. Um, he's like, can you pause it? Yeah, uh, I didn't make you pause it so I could like, make dinner. It was like, uh, I just had to heat something up. Okay, it was like a, a two-minute pause. Yeah, um, and uh, it was a nice little show. It was an hour long, oh, which Tony. was awesome. Yes, always. The week before, it was two hours, no, so no. I didn't watch all of it. I just fast-forwarded no, no. and watched the women's matches, but this, this one, I watched all the matches because it was only an hour long, mm-hmm. and uh, there was some great stuff. Billy Starks looks awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's doing really great. I would not be surprised if she won the uh, tournament, uh, the the World TV title tournament mm-hmm. that they're currently running right now. Although I am also interested to see Queen Aminata take that. I mm-hmm. think she's got a lot of heat right now. But I genuinely don't know who's going to win because they both uh, Queen Aminata's got a ton of heat and yeah. she'd be a great champion. But also like Billy Starks is part of the Athena faction that's like kind of taking over. It seems like maybe yeah. Billy Starks needs to win this title to like earn some respect and maybe a way back to Athena. We'll see. Yeah, and also a thing I noticed watching this show, Billy Starks had a spray tan, in my opinion. So it looked like she just has a look where I can tell she may be leveling up some of her like uh, Luke. We call it a Luke. uh, L-E-W-K. Who says that? Luke. A Luke. Well, Luke is already a name. Serving a Luke. Anyway, oh, uh, I just can't look talk Skywalker. Good, um, stop it. Okay, stop making fun of me. Okay, I did. Okay, God. <laughs> I'm hiding. I'm hiding. No, but I just like she looked like she was like you know starting to maybe yeah. come into an era of like being a real like superstar. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm proud of her. I'm proud uh, of her as well. I'm I'm happy for her. Yeah. Um. And she beat Mercedes Martinez, which is no small feat because Mercedes no. Martinez is a is a big tough gal. Yeah. And uh, Queen Emanata beat Red Velvet, mm-hmm. and uh, that was a great match. And Red Velvet was wearing her little apron and doing her little stir motions. And mm-hmm. I love Red Velvet. I think she's doing a great job. I mean, I love seeing her get spotlight. I want to see her interact with or have a match with Mercedes Monet because she yeah. she always reminds me of Mercedes in a lot of ways. They have similar like styles and um Mm -hmm. they're like kind of the same size you know yeah uh and she just like and she has like her character feels a little bit similar to like early sasha banks um and so i think i would love to see them interact or have a match or her be like her protege the only other thing i want to call out from this show just because when we get into the awards i'll probably talk about it more um was uh london lightning oh yeah london lightning um we love your name. Yeah. I, <laughs> and and we think it'd be really funny if you got super successful with that name and all of a sudden the next Roman Reigns is a guy named London Lightning. Yeah. Anyway. People are going to, kids are going to want to grow up to be the next London Lightning. You know, yeah. I, I also think it sounds like there's like a place called like London, Maine and that's the, that's the minor league baseball team there. The oh. London Lightning. <laughs> yeah. No, we thought that was a, a, a fun, uh, fun name anyway um should we do the awards or the awards or ceremony. shooting range or what shooting range uh you know what of all the things the shooting range i think the thing we really should talk about miro and cj perry they're married oh. and they're getting they're splitting up they're his splitting hot wife up. he's always talking well, about his hot wife and she got God that like, finger infection and it was gross it no, was gross kidding. so he's like get out of here but so it's sad that they're breaking up yeah it is it's, sad um because it's real right it's not no like it is real story. it's not a storyline it's not the thing where he abandoned his wife i mean he did abandon his wife but yeah but it's this is uh it's been reported on like TMZ, unless they're like working us through tmz and stuff but here's the thing i did see and i don't know if this was like because they're both there for AEW or something but swerve strickland was posting some instagram posts where he was like at an event and CJ Perry was there with him. Wow. So I don't know. And I do remember recently, who was it? Uh, Hangman, I think, was making fun of Swerve saying his fiance left him. Ooh. So perhaps. So it sounds like he was single. Whoa. So perhaps Swerve. Holy shit. This Holy is some shooting. Shit. This is some shooting range. This is yeah, some juice. Yeah, this is some Edge and Lita and yeah, yeah. Matt Hardy. This is some juice. Miro. Yeah. Um, Miro is, Hardy. Is Asuka injured? So I that was the thing is that she th- everybody said she was injured. She hurt her leg or her knee at the last SmackDown. But then like I was watching SmackDown from this week and she was there taking bumps and yeah. she didn't have a match, but she was like beating up uh, Naomi and 
Bianca with the rest of damage. Maybe control. they meant emotionally injured because yeah, she, of what Goldberg said about her. Was that about her? Did you see that when he was the like spear? some Japanese lady? He was talking about somebody doing a spear. Well, this is before. Okay, that yeah, Goldberg's quote. In really the same, been in the same interview. He was complaining that WWE let some Japanese quote some Japanese lady take his record for. Oh, like, he was talking about Oscar. That's right. You're right. Yeah. And I was offended by him referring, and he mispronounced her name, and like it was. It's also funny because Oscar's. I mean. He's not even close to being in the same league as Asuka as far as like being a wrestler. And honestly, a star. She's had a longer period of sustained stardom than uh, than Goldberg has. Well, he's not been month. a very good sport about it. I did see a thing in Goldberg's defense that Bret Hart shits on him all the time because he was the one that kicked him in the head and ended his career because he gave him like a super bad concussion. And somebody asked him about that. And Bret Hart like never will not shit on Goldberg. And Goldberg was like, yeah, I mean, I apologized and like, you know, I feel bad about it and I felt bad for like 20 years and it's like, I don't know what else to do and I'm sorry. Like, can only feel bad. I was just like, yeah, I guess I, after a while I kind of would be like, yeah, I don't know what else you want, man. Um, Wait, that was Goldberg who said I apologized a bunch or Bret Hart who said I apologized a bunch? Goldberg. Oh, okay. Goldberg's the one that hurt Bret Hart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, Bret Hart didn't do... I'm trying to understand yeah. how oh. this how this is in his defense. No, I'm just saying oh, okay. it's not in his defense. I should oh. have said defense. It's just that uh, he is, uh, I think he's trying to give it back. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> After he's, oh. like, he's trying to, like, you know what? I'm tired of getting shit on. I want to shit on somebody. So who you can think- I shit on? Oh, uh, a woman who's an yeah. ethnic minority. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to shit on her. That always works. Uh, anyway. Uh, what uh, What else yeah. did you want to talk about with shooting range? Um, oh. Well, uh, Kate Middleton has cancer. Yeah. It's sad. It's a shoot. She'll be have, okay. She's yeah. getting the best care in the world. I think you got to don't marry those. We prayed for her in church this morning. Oh. Yeah, they said her name. Wow. Which is part of what happens when you're an Episcopalian is they pray for the royal for family the a lot. <laughs> I was going to say don't marry the first the heir to the British throne. <laughs> it seems like it doesn't work out for the for the mm-hmm. It's uh, Diana, Kate. I mean, Kate. Hopefully, will be all right. But still, it's like, yeah. it's it's a kind of a bad luck thing. It's crazy that she and Charles both have cancer at the same time. Yeah, wild. What Twinsies, a coincidence! Twinsies. It's, yeah. Um. Okay. Should we do the awards? The awards ceremony. Ceremony. <laughs> ceremony. It's always a different song, and it's never the even award. done. It's not anything. So. Uh, okay. So promo of the week. There are a lot of good promos. Cody Rhodes and Romy. Cody and Romy did some some fun promos. Yeah, but which stuff. one did you pick for the week? I picked Randy Orton and Kevin Owens again, which I realized that they already have a perfect tag team name, which is RKO mm. uh, versus and Pretty Deadly. Uh, they had a little backstage segment with Nick Aldis um, where Kevin Owens was. Uh, they they interrupted Kevin Owens and he was like, "I have a tag team partner. I'll, we'll have a tag team match next week." And he asks Randy Orton. Behind mm-hmm. it, he's like, hey, we are a tag team. Do you want to be my tag team partner? Randy Orton's like next to Pretty Deadly. And then when Pretty Deadly starts to answer him, one of the Pretty Deadly guys turns and sees him. And he would like, to be fair, like nobody was standing there. And now all of a sudden there's a guy behind him. He's just like, huh! <laughs> <laughs> and he just almost falls over. Uh, and he's like, yeah, we'll be tag team. Uh, and then they did a callback to him punching Austin Theory and um, Grayson Waller at the same time. And so he... Uh, they called us like you shouldn't stand so close together after they Kevin Owens leaves and Kevin Owens punches them both at the same time again. A little callback. He's like, Randy, I did it again. Yeah, he starts screaming, Randy, <laughs> I did it again. Yeah. Um it's very, very fun. Very exciting. Well, was- mine uh my award for promo of the week goes to Dalton Castle. Mm. Uh who once again uh takes the cake uh with his pained screaming mm-hmm. about losing the boys to Johnny T V and Taya Valkyrie. Mm-hmm who stole the boys and then it turns out lost the boys because Johnny TV took them on a mountain to do man shit and then a bear came. Yeah. And according to Dalton, bears eat boys. Yeah. So we don't know if the boys have been eaten by bears or not, but it looks like it could be. Dalton gave a really harrowing performance of a man who's lost his boys. Mm Mm-hmm. And, you know, he had some substitute boys there, they're but they're single boys. use. Yeah, they're single they're, use they're boys. Backup Just use single them use boys. Use them for what, Dalton? <laughs> yeah. Use um, them for what? 
So I thought that was really great. That was like that. It was so good that it was the reason I remembered to turn on ROH this week. Yeah. I was like, I want to see this whole thing because I saw it on Instagram and it was I just. I love how they're having this like all time great feud. Yeah. <laughs> this in the in ROH. Yeah. I'm talking about I it I mean, enough, Dalton, so. Dalton just like, he's a star, man. He is. He's a star. He gets it. He's funny. He puts his whole foot in everything that he does. Uh-huh. Like he's not. He doesn't back down, and, that, and those are the guys that I love. He's got that SUNY Brockport TV club training. I also love like the commitment to like any kind of weird thing that you just made up, like having yeah. boys. Mm-hmm. You know, like like the whole boy, like bears eat boys. You know, bears like eat boys. It's like a whole world building thing that's just really fun. Yeah, he's a good he's a good improviser because he was making sense of every. I mean, that was a weird choice. <laughs> From yeah. Johnny TV, that they were on a mountain, and then <laughs> then a bear showed up, yeah. and then he just committed to it and was like, "Yeah, they were, of course a bear showed up, and they eat boys, <laughs> you know." And so Bears it's very it's boys. good improv. Um, yeah, that uh, so could easily de- derail everything, but it didn't. Nope. Uh, and uh, okay, match of the week. I picked Cope Cage three, which was only four. Um, that was a great it was a great payoff, and I loved both those guys a lot. Um. And now we get to the era of Adam Copeland as the TNT champion. Is he going to do the Cope Open? The Copen? Mm, for yeah. the TNT title? We don't know what it's going to be like. We've seen the patriarchy. Now Christian can do something new. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe they find... I still think they're going to tag together at some point. Probably. They have to. Yeah. Uh, the patriarchy has to fall at some point. Or has something. it ever? Uh, it's true. I guess I shouldn't bet my money on that. Oh, yeah. Don't bet your money on that. Uh, well, my match of the week was I'm going to give it to Queen Aminata and Red Velvet. That was a great match. Um, because I thought that was a really, it was a really cool match. Like, mm-hmm. Red Velvet was doing a lot. Like, there was a uh, lot of high fly and, like, running, like, whoo, it was a very exciting, fast paced, fun to watch match. And it I. Makes sense because she really, she was kind of the underdog because Queen Aminata yeah. is, you know, more powerful than her and stuff. So it makes sense that she would have to just be like, yeah. just hit her constantly and queen amanada wrestled that like fast-paced really physical match during ramadan while she's fasting that's right so like you know sure her blood sugar was probably low yeah and what and then she's gonna get red velvet to push it back up you know yeah <laughs> um uh all great. right outfit of the week uh i picked naomi because she had a bunch of fun colors on and it was like oh this is a very like it was a very like visually interesting her versus eo sky uh, just a lot of color going on, like a lot of like, uh, like neons and things, and it was because they both have very like colorful, vibrant gear. Yeah. Uh, but I picked Naomi because uh, she also her hair is always part of her outfit as well. Oh yeah, she um, does great with that hair. To Mercedes. Uh, okay, my outfit of the week is going to Mina Shirakawa. Oh yeah, she had a great outfit on this week and she she did a whole dance when she came out it was really fantastic Mm -hmm. and theatrical and i loved it it was all right shock of the week uh so chris statlander tapped out in the main event of rampage to julia hart which is crazy because chris statlander doesn't tap out that much and also it was mostly a big shock because our dvr didn't get the end of rampage oh right so i I didn't get to see it i had to read the result and i was like what (laughs) So it's a big shock. Yeah, that is a shock that a I also match. missed because of the cutoff. Yeah, yeah. great match because it was a live rampage, so yeah. they couldn't edit it, so it went a little bit over. I uh, I don't know if if much shocked me this week. I mean, last week I think the shock of the week was Mercedes coming to AEW is probably what I would say. Oh yeah, of course. We didn't do a show last week, but um, this week I would have to say probably if I'm being honest, even though this is a repeat of something I've already called out, the, my shock of the week is that Bears eat boys. Like, yeah, I, like I didn't think that they would take the boys on a mountain and lose them and there'd be bears like I didn't see that coming. So that's my shock. Of the I'm week. shocked at the irresponsibility of taking boys. Yeah. To a mountain. On a mountain. With bears. Yeah. You don't do that. Bears eat boys. Bears eat boys. Um, also, they don't have shirts. It must have been cold. Yeah. Anyway. They don't even have pants. Usually. Yeah. Sometimes they do. Um, all right. Uh, nerd fantasy booking. Uh, I want Bailey to jump in the ring of AEW Dynasty. Basically, I want Bailey to just take full advantage of the fact that WWE probably is like not going to punish her for anything right now. Mm-hmm. And just like at whatever Mercedes matches at AEW Dynasty, because I'm sure she will have a match there. Uh, just jump the ring or jump the, ra- the guardrail and just start uh, helping her out. Just being like, what are you going to do? Yeah. Okay. 
What are you going to make me sign an NDA? Yeah. Uh, and just like hold the women, the WWE Women's Championship that she probably will have at that point. Um, high in the air on AEW TV. Yeah. Um, mine, I'm going to go with my little MJF thing. I shared this with you the other day. Because mm. mm. um, uh, MJF's return... I mean, it's got to happen sometime. Who knows when? I don't think it's imminent, but it could happen, you know, later this year, I'm yeah. assuming. Uh, maybe full gear, maybe something like that. Maybe he'll show up at SummerSlam. Who the fuck knows? But either way, I think if if he comes back to AEW, which I hope he does mm-hmm. uh, and think he will do, um, I think he would be cool for him to do like an homage to Broken Matt Hardy. By being a broken MJF Mm -hmm. and being like a silly, like crazy mad scientist Mm -hmm. type dude, because he's already done the other kinds of like twisted, mad, evil things. And he's a very funny person. He has great comedic instincts. I think it would be really fun to see him going in another direction with the like silly, crazy Mm -hmm. wrestler stuff. Um, And yeah, it would just be more for him to do. Yeah, it'd be different from what he's Yeah, and I think he could, it would open him up to having. Because I also would like to see him have a little bit of a faction or at least like some toadies or somebody to follow him around. Yeah. Um, a faction that he sticks with because he's, per- he's famously yeah. had several factions that he gets Honestly, rid of. like it, I think it would be cool if he came back and was like aligned with Stokely again mm. and like was part of the Stokely, Willow, Chris Statlander, like bad, if they, they, if they all the do a heel titles. turn. Yeah. That'd be sick. <laughs> yeah. Well, like, because if, if Willow does a heel turn and it becomes mm-hmm. like this, like, kind of more heelish, bitter, like, oh, we hate these, g- mm-hmm. oh, we, this company screwed us kind of yeah. group, I think he'd be a great addition to that. Uh, and that would be very fun and cool. And I he has it. he has history with Stokely, and I think that'd be cute. Yeah. I would love it. Anyway. And Statlander's from Long Island, and so is Willow. Yeah. There They're you the go. The Long Island connection. Exactly. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. LIC. <gasps> okay. <laughs> See, this is a great booking. This is great. And and he's crazy and they're crazy. They're all crazy. They're all crazy. Um that or I think he could do a cool Bray Wyatt thing in a similar way. You yeah. know, like kind of a like I actually have magic evil. Um yeah. anyway. That's our show. Bye. Bye everybody. Bye. Happy wrestling. We'll see you after WrestleMania. We'll see you after WrestleMania with a full report. <laughs>